Hello, everyone out there. I hope you can all hear us now because F it, we're just going to wing it. Like a famous man said, F it, we'll do it live. <laughs> and uh, welcome. We're uh, DEF CON 201 out here. Uh, and uh, you probably, you know, before we start, there's probably something you should wonder about uh, if anyone can do it. Next slide. Next. Now, everyone, is, is someone alive with a pulse out there? There we go. There we go. So, um, so you're probably wondering uh, who the F are us. So we're going to introduce all three of us. Uh, so first of all, the, the, vo the voice here on this end is Side Pocket. I'm one of the co-founders of, of DEF CON 201. Uh, I do most of the social media and event planning, and including trying to prep for this wonderful nightmare that is the uh, DEF CON Groups Village. Uh, I'm really impressed with everyone getting even this running. Uh, a bit of background about myself. I also, a uh, uh, long time, that time at GI Jack, uh, I was through uh, MIT uh, 2600. We're long night time alumni. We're going to get into part of how we figured out we should make a death group here. I'm also a, a long time person of Phone Losers of America. I've done active stuff with YesMen. I am a tool member. And if you want to see what my face looks like uh, after doxing me, uh, you can go check the Mr. Robot Season 3 premiere or the Jack Ryan premiere. I was the guest uh, extra hacker on that show. So next slide with the man himself. Right. Next. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what's it called? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm G.I. Jack. Uh, I am actually an actual in cockatoo. Um, uh, I'm the other co-founder of uh, DC201. Also a 2600 alumni. Uh, not uh, not uh, quite as long-term as uh, Mr. Pocket over here. I uh, do the infrastructure and backend for DC201. I maintain all the servers. Uh, what you call them? Well, I also got behind Ninja OS. Uh, it's a live OS based on uh, Arch Linux. We'll get into that. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and uh, avid motorcycle. Um, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast, and I do much, much, much more. Uh, if you have any more questions about me, you can always ask me sometime on IRC. And the answer may or may not be sarcastic. Next slide. Next slide. Yes. Advanced slide. Uh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm the third guy. Uh, I just do things around here, you know? I I mean, I, I show up for a while. I do document work. I designed our flyers and a few of our graphical assets. And, yeah, that's... Uh, that's generally where I am around here. Oh, and by the way, the, the awesome bird art, by the way, for each of us, is by a person on Twitter called Pockets. It's at underscore P-O-C-K-E-T-S-S. -S. Uh, no relation. No relation. Yeah. yeah. All right, advanced slide. Because, you know, we just like uh, adopting nice. pets here. Do, do, do. I love this. This is like being on FTL. There we go. There we go. So... For all of you global people out there, and even in the United States, you're probably wondering, what is in New Jersey and where are we? So big, a couple of factors we're going to yell out. Uh, New Jersey is one of the 13 colonies that rebelled against the American Revolution. Yes, we're located in that third world nation that's in the United States. Uh, we're the home to many firsts. Uh, we're also home to the Jersey Shore, both the show and the place, and the Sopranos. And the Socialist Republic. No, wait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last, last to grant slaves their freedom. Uh, we are ourselves are located in Jersey City and Hudson County. So for those who don't know where Hudson County is, if you look at the map on the screen, uh, you should see friendly white families to the right of that. If it's colorblind, you're, it's red. Uh, it says well-to-do conservatives, who I don't think are well-to-do anymore. Below that is hipsters. Minorities. That's where Hudson County is. And uh, yeah, does anyone have any more comments about New Jersey? Right, 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 right there. So um, yeah, basically, I I came from Long Island. I can't really say anything. Oh, y y y y like literally, if he's from Long Island, he wasn't able to speak until he physically got to New Jersey. Pretty much. Um, where is no. People's Republic of New Jersey? <laughs> uh, what's it called? I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, it's it's all. Uh, so uh, next slide, advance. Engage. What factor seven to zero? All right, there we go. So. Uh, we're not quite done with New Jersey because, and trust me, we'll go by this really fast because uh, we want to get into some questions, hopefully, from the audience. Uh, there, uh, something a lot of people don't know about with New Jersey is there's a lot of 
technological and just hacker AF stuff that's in our state. And we just thought we'd do a couple of highlights here. So first of all, way back, uh, depending if you like the man or how most of us do now, we hate the man. Um, Edison's original labs were located in Moleno Park in West Orange. These are all places in New Jersey, by the way. Uh, they've been co either converted into museums or moved to other states and been converted into museums because, you know, we're basically a, a New Jersey's a dumpster. You just pick stuff up and move them to other states. So you can thank uh, particularly those labs for things like electricity, movies, things like that were directly invented there. Uh, then uh, a little bit later on, uh, John von Neumann built what's known as the IAS machine, sometimes known as the von Neumann machine. Uh, you probably heard of a little guy um, known as Alan Turing. He's one of the people that conceptualized modern computing and also uh, helped crack the Enigma machine along with the Polish Cypher Bureau. He had a concept for what a, a, a computer, a computational machine that could actually remember and store memory. And he's where we get the von Neumann architecture from. Yes, and Neumann, uh, Neumann! Uh, Von. Yes, teamed up at the Institute of Advanced Studies in, in this in this cesspool that's known as Princeton, New Jersey, and defied. Well, he stole basically ten million dollars. Uh, got yelled by the government, private industry, and everything else, and created the first machine that did functional stored state uh, memory. Uh, so it could actually remember stuff and recall things you, back. You, you say Princeton's a cesspool, but New Jersey's the cesspool. Well, no, it's, it's a, just. Well, like, no, again, New, Jer New Jersey is a pothole with potholes in it. It's great. Right, um, right. And then basically around 1940s, Bell Lab kind of got sick of New York City and they decided to uh, relocate with the family, like relocations in 1967 at uh, Murray Hill. They actually opened up a ton of locations. Murray Hill is, not, is the current last resting place of Bell Labs. You can see the photo in the slide, and uh, it's now known as like Nokia Bell Labs, kind of? Nokia Bell Labs. For a time it was Novell. For a time it was SCO. Uh, Unix was invented yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, 1969, uh, Unix was invented right here yep. in uh, New Jersey. There was a lot of stuff invented at Bell Labs. Uh, the first working transistor, solar power uh, panel, uh, one of the first working uh, CRT color displays was invented here in the state. Also, the C language, uh, Unix. We can't display video, but there's a hilarious, if you go into YouTube, and search Bell Labs Unix, and I, I crap you not, there is a documentary that Bell Labs made called Unix Making Computers Easier to Use. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's that. We're almost done. Uh, I don't quite know, and I believe 201 was the first area code, and yes. if it's not, it's the yeah. first public. Oh, actually, yeah. No, uh, actually, uh, 201 is the first area code, uh, because in the old uh, North uh, North American uh, numbering plan. Even if it wasn't, we're no. claiming that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, this, this, this is the reason why we specifically uh, rep 201 instead of 973 or anything else. And yeah. the old uh, North American number plan, uh, you can't use a number one. Right. Uh, what's it called? The middle. The, the middle digit has to. Uh, the, what's it called? The middle digit has to be a zero or, or a one, and the end digits can't be. Uh, what's it called? A, z a zero one. So yeah. two or one is the lowest possible error code, and that's what New Jersey got is the first error code. And, and, and number one. And, and just to know, when he says middle digit. He means the number sequence of the phone number, not another common middle digit. That's basically hello in New Jersey. And, ah. But um. <laughs> Uh, three last quick things. Uh, that would be a one. Yes. Back in the... Uh, uh, at least it's not a number... It's a four at least it's not a number two, which is our government. But uh, a few more quick points. Um, uh, way back in, I believe it was 1990, the Secret Service actually set up a sting operation in Bergen County called Operation Cyber Snare, where they launched in Bergen County a BBS known as Cellio 5-1. Uh, and then in 1995, the first, uh, I think the first main BBS arrest happened with six people from all over the place mm. uh, were indicted under hacker handles. Uh, if you remember, or hopefully try not to remember, Geohotes, he... Uh, hacked uh, the iOS. He's more famous for being hacking the PlayStation 3 and then got sued over it. We did a panel about it. We're going to explain that later. He actually is from Hackensack, New Jersey. And finally, if you remember, we were supposed to have a thing this year called DEFCON China. That got canceled real fast. Um, we, uh, you know, because Winnie the Pooh got canceled. But no, it's that uh, um, so the partnership with Defcon China is a company called Baidu, and basically it's China's Google. And what a lot of people don't know about it is that Robin Lee that's his actual name. Um, in, in China, uh, all the back end for their entire system, including their main search engine, because they got the same star as Google being a search engine, was coded when he was uh, working at IDD Information Services in New Jersey, which, if I remember correctly, is in Newark. Oh, wow. So, so yeah, so, so, all, so half of all of China's infrastructure is from code made in New Jersey, so that's that. So Joy. Speaking That's of which, why they call us let, the People's Republic. Yep, let's get into actual DC 201 stuff. Next slide, please. Kind sir. Kind, kind person of nondescript gender, mineral, or vegetable. There we go. So, yes, yeah, so, 
Uh, for those who don't know, there have been three previous attempts to make a DC-201 in the past. All of them miserably failed. The last one went from like 2011 and tapered off somewhere around 2013. You can use the Wayback Machine to find out as someone just goes through our slides. Um, <laughs> We don't know why, because that's actually one of the reasons why our Twitter's off, because they have the original DEFCON 201 uh, account on Twitter, yeah. and they moved to Georgia, which tells you a lot about them, and we uh, haven't heard from them ever since. So we had to take DEFCON 201 NJ. Yep, and, uh, and, and we don't know why their meetings fizzled out, but we can make a guess, because who actually wants to go to Paramus? Fucking Paramus. Um, I, I guess there's something wrong with every part of the state, and... Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not that I actually want to go to Paramus. Well, never mind. I mean, you've <laughs> had really. experience trying to go to NYC, tw uh, sorry, 2600 meetings in New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like part of that state where it's hard to get through with public transportation. It's not really mm -hmm. much there. It's just mostly like strip malls and kind of, it's not really accessible as far as like meeting places go. So oh, yeah. it's, it's, it wasn't really a good location to do like a group. Yeah. Uh, so when we, well, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this one, uh, well, what's it called? I, I'm pretty sure Side Pocket had the same, we both had like the same idea at the same time. Is mm -hmm. that like, you know, like, oh, there's a lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot. There's a lot of hackers uh, from New Jersey. There's a lot of people who like could always meet in either uh, what's it called? The New basically all meet in New York City, but no one ever wanted to do anything in New Jersey. So like, yeah, let's do something in the state uh, yeah. because we, we, we also noticed uh, because that's why we did the history lesson that New Jersey is hacker AF. But like, uh, we're, our yeah. theory is that there's a lot of people who are too afraid to come out, and we don't blame them because kind of like with some of the yeah. NYC 2600 groups and other organizations, sorry, the 2600 groups and other organizations. Um, that there's a very huge corporate slant in New Jersey that is very off-putting, uh, mm. kind of the way corporates are. So uh, we decided, F it, do it live. Next slide, person. Advanced slide. I think we bored our there audience there. There we go. So, yeah, and then basically we're like, F it, let's make DEF CON 201 or DC 201. So our first meeting was in March 17, 2008. In seven, uh, March 17, 2017, that's a mouthful. Uh, we, we just were kind of like, hey, we'll find a place, meet up, we'll, we'll talk some stuff, maybe we'll do a workshop, maybe hopefully we'll have someone to do some speaking. And then back in March uh, of this year, we actually celebrated our third beer anniversary. So we're like the longest lasting out of the New Jersey groups as far as we know. Uh, we've had some really amazing uh, stuff. I'm really happy that we have a diverse mix of, of not only representation in terms of like ethnicity, uh, you know, sex, backgrounds, color, but also just different types of hackers. We've had people who love lock picking, biohacking, uh, uh, reverse engineering, uh, forensics, uh, knitting just all sorts of anyone with a STEM background. Uh, one thing that uh, I'm going to hand to G.I. Jack a bit about is that, uh, that I loved, and this was his idea, was when you do become a member, and we can deal with that in the Q&A section, uh, we do have our own Nextcloud that's members only. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Or? Um, at this point, I almost don't want to talk about it. Uh, it's, it's infrastructure. It's okay, infrastructure. so it's, it's infrastructure. Uh, Nextcloud is a great piece of software. Uh, it's one of the last remaining... Asterix. Uh, no, uh, uh, what's called? <laughs> nice cloud is great until it doesn't work, and it's yeah. Uh, um, we're it's, actively looking for a good replacement. The Unix experience. Um. Yeah, well, it's basically it's like the last piece of lamp software that people actually use. Um, yeah, it, that's, that's right. PHP. Yep. Okay, so basically it's like a combination of it does calendars, contacts. Basically, it, it does like a groupware uh, in the browser with a nice web interface uh, with uh, web dev, car, car dev, cal dev. Uh, it can sync up, you know, it has a plugin for email, has a plugin for uh, maps, has a lot of interesting plugins, has a plugin for uh, LibreOffice Online. So there's an HTML5 LibreOffice client which runs as a Docker container that it forwards information from. That will but, fill your computer after yeah, four games. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that sometimes actually works uh, as well, like like the rest of it. Like uh -huh. the, so, when like next cloud's working, it, it, it's it's pretty cool because it's you know if you want to like run your own like cloud hosted calendar with like web dev, but it's mm -hmm. still PHP. Um. See, the the way I like to describe it is like. It's it's like if it was all put together with dental amalgam. It's full of mercury. It tastes like shit, and generally is an unpleasant experience. But, but it's very necessary. But yeah. if you if you want to if you want to mount with storage space, you can actually backend this directly mm -hmm. to an S3 bucket mm -hmm. and with like unlimited storage, which is kind of cool. Yep. And and speaking of that, uh, we we met that some truly it. amazing people. We're gonna do shots at the uh, end, but we're really fortunate enough to have awesome speakers and people do workshops such as Liz Fong Jones, Night Owl, uh, Mr. Black Cipher himself, and more. And uh, speaking of that, we're going to talk a little bit about how we sort of set up DEF CON uh, DC201 here. So uh, advance next slide if someone can do that. 
Doo -doo -doo. Someone advance the next slide, please. Anyone that has blood. There, there we go. So, uh, so speaking of transportation and bad infrastructure, we want to let people know uh, why you should actually travel to New Jersey and why DC 601 should stop its bitching. Um, <laughs> We, we want to make sure, uh, one of our priorities when we were looking for locations was to make sure uh, where we would be as accessible to everyone as much as possible, including the location itself. And uh, that it's on the first floor, because we've had that problem in the past. Yes, well, we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to make sure like people who have any physical or mental disabilities should be able to enter in. We always put, um, if there's any sort of thing that might like mentally like harms, they call them trigger warnings, we always try to make sure to get those out there, mm -hmm. because trust me, it's New Jersey, we, we will get we to those just by existing. place, you know? We want to be yeah. open to as many people as possible because yes. hackers are an extremely diverse community. Yes, we want to make an inc inclusive space in a state that is like the opposite end of the inclusive. <laughs> well, it's like one yeah. of the reasons why I, I kind of formed this is because like I, we always used to bitch uh, that um, everything. We always used to bitch that everything. Yeah. We always used to bitch that everything in New Jersey kind of sucked. Uh, so we did a. Uh, we were like, why does it suck? It's because there's nothing cool. So like, let's do something cool and yeah. try to like turn the state around. And try not to do like also like some of the mistakes we've seen other like uh, meetings in the past that we're not going to name names. Uh, yeah. And we also want to make sure that uh, you know that we have, which Sarasol actually did a bunch of, is extensive documentation. So if you do mm -hmm. have to take uh, NJ Transit, the like, elusive nightmare, you can actually get here. Yeah, at our current venue, I have listed at least four different ways to get there just by public transportation. And if you're driving and parking, I. I wouldn't recommend it in Jersey City, but I even have a parking space that you can park at. It's like two dollars to park, and then you get a bus ticket and head on to DC 201. Yep. Uh, so speaking of that, just to hammer in the point, next slide, please, uh, volunteer. Advance slide. So to kind of stick in that that point, because I'm going to talk while the slide hopefully transitions here. Uh, that. <laughs> The main reason why we want DC uh, D, uh, 6 well, one out stop bitching is that no one wants to go to Pennsylvania. Uh, our argument here is, do you see this picture on the screen? Love you, Heath Hacker. We, no, it's not, it's not, not Hev Hacker. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, do, it's Docker Eye. Um, yeah, so, so question to everyone in the audience. You see that picture right there? Um, is that a riot due to all of like, the racial injustice and like COVID and stuff? Or is that the Eagles winning? We rest our case. Next yeah. slide, please advance. <laughs> um, advance slide. slide. It's getting there. It's kind of okay. like this is like a telephone yeah, like game. A there, we there we go. go. So. As we said, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just another group out of the many DEF CON groups that are across the nation around the world, and we, uh, we have the same frustrations and pitfalls that everyone else does, including probably the most difficult one that we still to some degree have struggles with, even though we really have no complaints about this, which is finding a venue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting a space, and you know, we agree with DEF CON groups that this needs to be an open space that doesn't have like a door charge fee, or that you can negotiate with the people there in order to mm -hmm. meet around again accessible. And uh, I don't know if we're going to name names here, but we just we've gone through two other locations before our current one. Our first venue was like what you would think of when you're like, okay, let's have like a DEF CON, you know, DEF CON groups meeting where it was a hacker space and it had giant power tools and mm -hmm. you know a bunch of stuff there. The problem was is there was a lot of drama from that hacker space and the it final. It wasn't exactly in a good corner of Hoboken either. Yeah, you can probably make some guesses here, but also, I mean, not yeah. that Hoboken's exactly a good corner in the first yeah. place. But and, and, and the other thing about which is our nail in the coffin is we'd have people show up with stuff and then their stuff would go missing yeah. during the meeting. Yeah, that, that was kind of a big uh, no thanks kind of. And it, and it wasn't any of our members either because we, we were very vigorous about that. So we decided to move again and our next venue was more physically accessible and the owner liked us, but we kind of got the vibe that the employees didn't. There was a lot of yeah. headbutt clashing with like culture and timing and stuff, and so that wasn't working out either. Yeah. So, like, the, the second venue was nice because it was right on the uh, subway, right on the PATH train. Problem was that we, uh, uh, while we were pretty much in with the uh, owner of the place and they wanted to have cool hacker stuff going on there, uh, the, the employees were kind of working against us. Uh, we'd noticed things were like messed up a little bit and what was what was the final nail in the coffin was like uh when some of the employees just 
up and left without like cleaning up the uh, restaurant and it got to be a problem enough that we decided that we weren't going to work with them on that well basically to elaborate more um we got a complaint that that like we somehow like messed up the restaurant even though we took pictures that night it was completely clean yeah and we didn't go anywhere and because we, we they gave us the keys to lock it that's how much the owner trusted us and so our theory is that an employee messed up and they were like oh you know no one likes hackers we'll just blame it on the the group yeah. that's there easy scapegoat you so know? just like goldilocks next slide please uh you know we had to find a new location and uh we eventually we did and i think we're pretty happy with it they're called subculture uh they're located on uh, uh 260 if you had an extra oh, that's 2600 um newark avenue in downtown jersey city new jersey it's about five blocks away from the current uh path train and there's a lot of other avenues in order to get there as everyone beeps in unison behind us because uh, it's Jersey City. Uh, they, they're a sandwich shop. Uh, they're, they have really affordable food with a lot of different options. They have a huge like 60 plus inch projection screen that we do all of our like presentations and talks on, kind of similar to what we have virtually here. Uh, and they have multiple TVs, power plugs for all of like the devices stuff we'll bring in. The people who run it are really cool. They, like us, came out really in support of Black Lives Matter and a bunch of other things in the city. And we've had great, truly a great working relationship with them. That's not any BS. Like we're really shocked by that. And while well, I think personally it's really cool in the back which Cirrusil sometimes ha helps with and so is Jack is uh, they have uh, a whole Raspberry Pi video game set up. They have like retro five games. Kiosks yeah. Of just emulated retro games. We didn't make that. That was already there. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I have to say something, just a note on the affordable food bit. Um, it's not like McDonald's cheap, but it is good for what you get, which is a big thing considering a lot of the places that people meet afterwards for like meetings in New York City and around Jersey City, they're often like dim, dinky bars in the middle of like midtown Manhattan where a simple burger is like $35. I, 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 don't, I don't fly with that. We're hackers. We're broke. We're hackers in the middle of New Jersey. Yeah. Do you have any comments you want to add on that? See next slide? Okay. Yeah. Put the, we saw the food guys. So, yeah. Uh, just it is a warning. It is the hipster district. So I mean, uh, well, so yeah. I, I would say the district is, but like the venue isn't. They're very down to earth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they attract hipsters just by proximity, I guess. Yeah. But. Plus, we're out of Hoboken, and yeah. none of us ever want to go. So next slide, so we can get rid of the watch of Hoboken out of our mouths. Yeah. Do do do. So we're going to talk a bit about that, how we sort of. Okay, now that we had a venue, what do we do next? So the big one is get the word out. There's a classic saying that I hate, which is if you build a bigger mousetrap, they will come. That is an effing lie. Um, as a lot of you guys know who make hardware and software projects, you often probably put stuff on GitHub and there's kind of that meme where you can get like 5,000 followers on Twitter, but you get someone to actually follow your GitHub and that's like an Olympic or event. Or worse, contribute to it. Make yeah. one pull request. Yes. So... The thing about it is, like, you know, you have to get the word out there. You have to do that, that thing that hackers have a hard time doing a lot of times, which is the socials. You have to, you, we're basically, if you're a hacker group, you're an anti, you're a social group for antisocial people. So the way we had to get the word out is we had to do extensive social media presence. Um, I will say that we are all lucky where, whether for good or for worse, when I was on Twitter, I had a following, G.I. Jack. I would say has followings or zombies or minions or something. Sarah sells. I, 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 I got some uh, an odd collection of weirdos and bots. Yeah, <laughs> and and we and you know Sarah sells known for his work and a lot of other people who are on stream right now are known for that. So we did have the advantage of a lot of people migrating over to our social media stuff, mm -hmm. but that didn't you know excuse that we had to make a meetup.com and now we currently yeah. pay for it and like even yeah. if you have a world class team of hackers like in every corner of hackerdom pretty much Pakistan. you're you're not going to be you know outright <coughs> getting followers to your defcon group yep. unless you actually put in the work to yep. make it visible and part of that is you know even when you have all your social media stuff together uh you could you need to have something that you know as they said in the big lebowski ties the room together so mm -hmm. we've gone through multiple versions in the of uh, the website the first version is something the first and third version was stuff i had to spin up just to have it um the second yeah. version all i'll say about it is when the person designing the website uh, when you ask them to put the link to the email on the main page and they say 
Oh, I didn't think I, I, I did. I don't think that's like a main feature or a priority feature. Yeah. That person's no longer in charge of the website anymore. So instead, we yeah. gave it to Saracel, and everything's magic. Yeah. No. The uh, one thing I have to say is visual, like synchronicity. You know, make sure that everything is readable, accessible. Everything's there. All your information is in the site on the page. The front page has the most important information, including contact information. That's something our previous website it's editor lacked. And a, and a big one PM. is that we also make sure that like there's, no, there's nothing tracking. There's no plugins. It yeah. doesn't use any scripting. So no it no JavaScript. Anything. No uh, no bots. No trackers. No one pixel dots. Yep. And uh, yeah, the worst thing I'll do is a few CSS animations tops, and yep. that's plain CSS. And if your browser has those turned off or disabled, usually for accessibility reasons, it'll just gracefully fall back. One of the quick features of ventilators we're a big fan of kiss up the band and also keep it simple, stupid. Uh, <laughs> Speak for yourself about the band. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, <laughs> New Jersey parking lot people. I'm um, speaking as a state. No, uh, and then the, the big one here is uh, we also tried to do a balance of popular platforms versus ethical platforms. What I mean by that is, like, we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, because everyone's on there. Uh, yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't have, for example, a Mastodon or something right. in the Fediverse or an independent blog or Onion that we run. We yeah. do have an Onion landing page. And, and it, that's, that's honestly something that I admire about this group and something that a lot of more uh, free culture-minded, open source-minded groups could <laughs> probably... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, stuck in my throat. Anyway, um, it's something they could learn about. Go to the platforms that people are on. Go where the people are. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, even if it's actually yep. Facebook, you know, it's run by a lizard king who uh, <laughs> lies to Congress through his teeth. Doesn't matter. Yes, the teeth. people are there. Yep. His teeth. Oh, maybe he doesn't. Uh, but, uh, his gills. Yes, but but real quick, yeah, and um, and that's a whole uh, because we're gonna go to the next thing in a bit. Um, that's where uh, I just lost my train of thought real quick on. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. So we're going to go on the next train of thought there. But yeah, and that also, if you're on a popular platform, you know, we, we talk about our, like, mass sound and stuff. We let people know about that. So that's yeah. a great way where we've moved people over to, like, potentially better stuff. And then the last thing, which is big, is that uh, we also are very local. So um, despite, you know, hackers and digital stuff, uh, before COVID, and we'll get to that in a second, um, we do make uh, Cercel design flyers. We print them out. I go everywhere yeah. and hang them up so that, you know, whether you're at a library or a bar or something, or yeah, a college, we, we you'll basically notice. paint the town black and white with all these flyers, yep. you know. We, uh, um, I designed the flyers to be instantly noticeable and readable from a distance so you'd see them hanging on the uh, side of a uh, built bulletin board from the street and you'd see oh that's a defcon 201 flyer mm -hmm. or you'd think oh that's an interesting flyer i want to see what it is because yeah. it, it just has just the right uh balance of information and white space yeah. so i'm going to do the next slide and then hand this off to gi jack so next slide please do 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 we are poking you with the pointer to change this. There we go. There we go. You want to le read our, uh, All right. what we're about? Our we're goals. an open technology group. Hashtag goals. Hashtag uh, goals. Uh, we are in, uh, an open technology we're group. Uh, we, we welcome all skill. Uh, we welcome, uh, regardless of background and skill and in person, uh, doing instead of, t uh, instead of talking, helping each other learn and grow, and give back to the community. So um, it's just basically we encourage everyone to show up. Uh, we're not like uh, I don't think there's many too many people in this scene anymore. They're kind of like the elite, uh, you know, elite kind of like you know, badass types or want to be badass types. So I don't, I don't really don't think that's like uh, too much of an issue in this scene anymore. Uh, unlike 30 years ago. Uh, so Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe another loop. Uh, but it's just basically, if you just want, like, want to call up, you have, like, tech problems. Uh, we do a lot of presentations. Uh, we like having, like, uh, we, we, we like having speakers. We get speakers. A lot of times we do get, like, uh, like the type of speakers uh, who do who actually do uh, talks at cons, like actual big cons. So it's like we've really established ourselves as kind of like, this is kind of like a, like a minor league talk circuit, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, we bring a lot of things to Uh, we have weird ideas of the projects. 
and uh, and, um, and that bit with uh, and the big thing which I feel lacks the end and should be a drive for all DEF CON groups out there is giving back to the community we just don't want to this is where we get the corporatism from we don't want to exist in a vacuum and just be like oh we'll just hand 50 kids like some high end laptops and then call it a day and everyone else is struggling hungry broke everything's broken and you know all of that so our whole thing is we reach out to our city we actually have good contacts with like the government in our yeah, city like and we, local we representatives with the mayor even like mm -hmm. it, we're we're on that level where we're you know actively working with our city government our local government and uh, not in the way that most hackers work with government or against rather but more that we're working on more progressive uh, programs and policies for technology uh, advancement and education. Yep, and uh, and also uh, again when you said uh, we're, there's some things we don't like about the government, including the federal government. But we, what we want to do is it's it's just one thing to constantly complain. It's another thing of okay, you have a list of problems. You're a hacker. What are you going to do about it? And that's the key. We do something about it, and that yeah. should be the strive for every group. So next slide. I think Jack can probably take this one real quick. Next slide, please. We're like there two we thirds go. of the way there. Okay, so uh, you can ch uh, check this out. Uh, we, ha uh, we have a constitution. Uh, we are a group that you, uh, what's it called? If you uh, hang out long enough, you have to join. It's just kind of, uh, it's, it's like a bit of a formality. Uh, we, we, keep a, we do keep a member list. Uh, uh, part, part of the constitution is a code of conduct. Uh, it's okay, whose idea was it to put that on the slide? L-O-L. Where? <laughs> Where's L-O-L? Oh, the, 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 the giant... Uh, <coughs> COC. Right, right. Uh, yeah. yeah so what do you think put that in there? It's our, it's our code of conduct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, keep your mind out of the gutter, man. Gosh. It's, 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 you're already in New Jersey. We're already in the gutter. You don't have to... You don't have to do this work. So anyhow, next yeah. slide, please. So it's, it's basically, it outlines kind of everything, uh, which is, is not acceptable. Uh, just boil it down to just, mm -hmm. just, don't be, just don't be an asshole. Don't be a dick. Yep. Uh, and don't, don't, like, don't, don't disparage anybody else. You're not, yep. like, cool for doing it. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Electronic uh, Frontier yeah. Alliance. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll take this part. So, yeah, one of the things that we did, I don't know if we were the first group, but we were one of the first groups to show what's called the Electronic Frontier Alliance. And yes, I know it's misspelled. I, someone's keyboard, it was me. Uh, they're drunk or I was drunk, aka Pebcac, fight me. So <laughs> the Electronic Frontier Alliance is a subsection of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They're a grassroots network, as, as my ride shows up in the background, is a <laughs> grassroots network of community and campus organizations, the cops are trying to show us that, campus organizations across the United States. Uh, basically, they, they, a lot of their terms kind of agree with a lot of our bulletin points that we talked mm -hmm. about earlier where they want to promote privacy and surveillance uh, and anti-surveillance and security at a local level for like real people who actually need to use it. So yeah, they're good people. Work with them. Fight for yes. your rights online. And if you're a DEF CON organization or an organization you want to join and look over that, you can go to eff.org slash fight. So next slide, please. I'm surprised they haven't like kicked us off yet. So uh, one of the big things that we particularly were trying to do this year is conventions and gatherings. So just a bit of highlights of what we do outside of the meetings. Sometimes we have a little specialty outsides, like we've had a little like code, like everyone gets together and does a code hackathon or whatever. Uh, but in uh, 2018 and 2000, in 2019, we worked with the Liberty Science Center. It's like a giant interactive science museum that's world famous to put on what's called NJ Makers Day. It's a thing that happens in New Jersey where all the different libraries and stuff do like making and crafting and things like that. And Liberty Science Center never did one. We didn't have one in our area, so we did it. And a lot of people showed up, a lot more people oh, yeah. than we thought. And we lost a lot of sleep on that, but it was really fun. And we really got to showcase a lot of local like, you know, makers and tool was there for the lock picking. It was really great. Um, and then you went to the, what was it, the wellness convention? Yeah, um, so the uh, New Jersey uh, Performing Arts Center had hosted a, uh, a, a small group uh, of local uh, wellness-oriented folks who were, it was mostly things geared towards like diet, exercise, health, and things like that, but DEF CON 201 was there, and you might think... Hacking is an exercise. Well, yeah, but it, you might think, okay, what does hacking have anything to do with your health and things? But it's there's a, actually quite a bit. A lot of it's draining your health. It's an um, exercise in uh -huh. frustration. Right, but, um, so basically I was there to talk about digital hygiene and how your, uh, the things you put online can 
can actually affect your health based on, you know, the effects that it has on your mental well-being, your social well-being, being, your emotional well-being, and your spiritual well-being. So we pretty much uh, packaged all that together and put a bunch of advice sheets out to uh, basically teach people on how to uh, be more aware of things like that. And that's a big thing because we, because uh, that's what she said, but no, is that uh, we, we love DEF CON and we like hacker conventions and gatherings, but we also, again, want to make sure we reach people, so yeah. we have to step outside of our comfort zone and, yeah. and try other venues and topics that you would never normally see hacker stuff, and that's how you get really interesting so people. Like, so like health things, yeah. because being doxxed is not healthy. Nope. And neither is uh, trying to program in Rust. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we were at the hack. Speaking of hack conventions, we were at this amazing one called Hackers Next Door by the Tech Learning Collective back in December, mm. uh, which was basically kind of like a more extreme anarchist version of Hope for Two Days. It was really fun. Uh, Jack, are you okay? Uh, and uh, and then the last thing we did, which is eight million years ago, and what was known as February 2020, was uh, myself, side, which is side pocket, uh, Sarah Cell, and an awesome dude who has a show. Uh, on our live streams called N Commander. Uh, we went to PAX East, which is a major video game convention out in Boston and uh, in Beantown, uh, uh, trying to avoid crazy drivers. And we put on a panel about video game hacking, which maxed out like the 600 person limit there. Yeah. And, you know, it was frustrating because it's us putting things together, but it was really, really fun and we let, let some amazing people there. Now, next slide, please. So we plan on doing a lot more of this type of stuff in 2020. And, um,. Yeah, uh, yeah, so COVID-19 happened, or 2020, the dumpster fire that keeps on burning. Um, so quick bullet points, if you aren't aware, one, we're in hell. Uh, two, how the F did New Jersey uh, become the stable state? Thank you, Murphy. Uh, Murphy's yeah, our governor. We're, we're doing pretty good over here compared to, like, every other state, honestly. Like, like, it's not that we don't have any issues up here. It's just we literally look on Twitter and the news and crap ourselves with yeah. seeing all the rest of the stuff going Let's on. Let's see, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Florida, we literally, Florida. We, we're, list, we're releasing so many states that need to quarantine when you visit New Jersey that we might as well just blockade the rest of the uh, union. Yeah, so, except maybe New yeah. York because they're kind of doing things okay. Also, we need their economy or whatever left of it. So, uh... Uh, they also, just to note, the U.S. federal government has a Gestapo now, so we are all crapping our pants, which is why we've been on a yeah, big privacy and security run like, like Jack. Trump secret police and shit. Yeah, uh, yeah real scary things going and, and on. And this is not tinfoil stuff. Ironically, the tinfoil people think this is the tinfoil stuff that's happening yeah. right in front of their face. So go figure. And we're kind of embracing the fact that we, like I described America, we're our third world country of first world money, and now we're losing the first world money. Next slide. So, because of all of that happening... Uh, Next slide, please. Yep. Uh, we, like many other groups, uh, had to do uh, virtualization. So, in March, uh, we had a big, giant 30th anniversary plan where we're going to have parties and games and blackjack and hookers and everything, and then COVID-19 happened. So within the course of literally two days, we had to completely virtualize our entire meetup, and we've been doing those ever since. Uh, the way we do it is we use, uh, how did we do it? We use a service called Restream.io, which allows us to send to one RPM broadcast, and it, it, it sends those uh, signals out to multiple different streams. We're currently on Twitch, DLive, and YouTube, RIP, Mixer, LOL, Microsoft, uh, <laughs> yeah. because we, none of us want to go to Facebook gaming. Uh, we're yeah. not gaming or Facebook. So uh, that's how we broadcast this stuff out. And uh, we also, which I'm currently working on, archiving our content on YouTube, the Inner Archive, our own, uh, a cool instance of uh, PeerTube. And that should say uh, DTube. I accidentally put DLive again because, again, PebCAC. Uh, and we've increased our social media footprint to the point where uh, we were sick and tired of just using these streams only for once a month, so instead we were like, hey, let's become our own TV channel <laughs> and just host the stuff that we've been itching, itching to teach. So as you can see in the picture here, I, I, which I'm going to get into, I do. I have my own show called Masters of Unlocking. I also have another show called Crypto Barons, which is teaching actual cr technology on cryptocurrency, not like snake oil stuff and market bull crap. You can go to Hoboken if you want that stuff. Mm. Uh, G.I. Jack has a show about Arch Linux and video games, right? Yes. I have, a, I have a show called Archvile, uh, where I play video games on Arch Linux, and I, do, I show like kind of like more of the technical stuff of how do you actually yeah. get everything running on Arch Linux, and I do you know a little bit like a little bit of hacking, not much, uh, some some light stuff. I show I show show, show a few tools. Yeah. They uh, recently he um, he decided that that uh, Doom Ultimate Doom on on uh, Ultra Nightmare mode was too too easy, so he did 
the actual hard mode you could do on Doom and unbox and configure the Pine Phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was trying not. To, I don't want to talk about that. I was trying to avoid talking about that. Okay. Uh, that's that's the trigger warning there. You can see the episode. It's archived. Where's and uh, was Ed Commander who also does a uh, bi-weekly show called uh, Control ha uh, you know, Hack? Uh, Alt, 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 Alt Hack and Commander. And uh, we, uh, we miss him to death. He's, yeah. he's pulling his hair out just thinking about the Pine Phone yes. and kind of fun to touch. And I, I still want to try the Pine Phone. <laughs> that's what she said. But real quick, uh, and then at so one point. point just, uh, at one point, oh, here you go. Yeah, Happy birthday. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and what we're saying here is that uh, we also made, uh, which you can find on our blog, if you go to defcon21.org, click news. We, um, we made a blog about what hackers could do during COVID-19, including running folding at home, which Jack blew G two GPUs on yes. to, to run our folding at home. I unfortunately forgot our folding at home. Uh, team number. Does anyone know it offhand? Or, uh, I'm no, an idiot. Can. For while I'm talking about it, and we also teamed up with Thug Crowd and the EFF to kind of do co uh, privacy and uh, security streams during like the Black Lives Matter protests, and we've attended. Uh, I won't say who, but we've attended our local uh, Black Lives Matter uh, protests in, in Jersey City. It was it was real fun. So until they figure that out, uh, next slide, please. We're near the end here. Don't worry, guys. Light at the end of the tunnel. So. We want to quickly go into all we have three of us here as we're looking at the pine phone like cavemen discovering fire for the first time. Uh, what, okay, what, uh, what was it? The, uh, the, what was that Amazon phone so long ago they made? Oh. Fi what, Fire OS or something? Which yeah. you could do. So uh, uh, we wanted to go into each what like some of our specialties are, just the three of us. We have a lot of amazing members, but just while we're here, so I'm going to go first. Uh, I, hi, it is me, Side Pocket. Uh, I've... I've uh, been friends with people at the Open Organization of Lock Pickers for many, many years. Uh, one of my mentors is The Night Owl, who I absolutely love. You can check him out on Twitter at N-I-T-E-0-W-L. And, uh, and basically, uh, three years ago, I, jo I showed up to uh, Tool, New Jersey, and they, they have their own meetings. You, you can actually, their Tool's doing a whole workshop all of DEF CON. I believe they have their own live stream. I think it's T-O-O-O-L live. That's Tool with three O's on Twitch. Um, and uh, we, uh, what do you call it? So I went there and I learned how to pick locks. So, uh, we, uh, but yeah, um, so uh, basically, uh, there were some issues where we tried to get certain uh, lock picker, uh, certain lock picker who is now well no longer invited to anything because he's a massive hacker fail uh, to show up to. I started going to pool meetings, both in New York and New Jersey, with the same training kit because they needed the resources. And then after losing my mind with COVID, I decided to make my own show called Master of Unlocking. The picture that you see there, there's even more stuff added to it, so it's even bigger now, which is what all women like to hear. And some men, I do appreciate them too. Pansexuals in the house, whoop, whoop. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we keep adding stuff. I actually just recently finished a whole uh, uh, tubular lock set. Next next Sunday uh, uh, during uh, the Master of Unlocking which I call the show because in joke to Resident Evil and eventually it's going to be two cases uh, actually if, if if you guys could hold the mic for half a second I actually right. want to do this real quick because yeah. I forgot to All right. Uh, just do me a favor so, with the pipe yeah. on is when you get frustrated so with it just hand it back to me instead of what? that's the kit that's how heavy Box boarding gets because, yeah. as a guy named Hunter S. Thompson says, when you started when you start a serious lock sport collection, you tend to lose count on the on where it's going. So that's what kind of I do. And if you can do next slide, now we're going to get into some truly hack stuff. Arch okay. Linux represent. Yeah, um, the notorious lock picker Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, yes, uh, here's my project. Hold uh, my to your face. Uh, here's this project, Ninja OS. Uh, it's based on it's a live OS. Uh, you can see, see the website is uh, ninjaos.org. Ooh, we're the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it called? Uh, Design this cute little logo in Krita. Uh, it's a mostly inclusive desktop. It's got security. It's uh, based on XSE4. That should be its tagline. The mostly inclusive desktop. <laughs> uh, what's it called? It's uh, you know security tools. It's got privacy tools. It's got media tools. Uh, it's got recovery tools uh, in case you need to recover like a hard disk. It's got like test disk and like X4 undelete and like all. Uh, what's it called? So Jack, no disk utility, and like all the, the usual like little hacker tools for like uh, restoring or recovering data so, or restoring. So what you're saying is whoever uses Ninja OS is a giant tool. 
Uh, <laughs> whoever produces Ninja OS has a giant tool. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it mostly has like things like you know an X archiver. It you know, supports all the archive formats. Um, if you double click on most things, it has a it has a word processor. It has a calculate. It has a numeric. It has a spreadsheet. So when you like most common file types, it'll open. So if like you know it's like a live OS. Uh, like most like live OS is you, it, boot, it boots it doesn't remember anything uh, resets it itself every time it restarts all it's, all it's, all, it's all changes nice. are saved to RAM in like a RAM disk uh, okay. so, uh, so so it's not so it's not trackable yeah. but at the same time has all the uh, uh, next slide please I thought we had because the guy was rambling <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah uh, and we did this really fast so I hope you have a sandwich taken away oh yeah so um. Basically, I do a bunch of things. I'm making a video game, I'm designing a Linux operating system, I'm working on a port of uh, Linux and other operating systems. Next slide, Linux please. Switch. Uh, I design and develop uh, a community for... Yeah, next slide, by the way. Uh, a community around 8-bit music for the, uh, the Nintendo. And in addition to that, I also am working on a couple of programming languages, a web browser, a uh, deduplicated file storage backend for uh, retrievable file objects, so things like ROMs and things like that can be deduplicated. He's literally his own GNU server, except it actually works. Probably other things, too. Uh, if if you're interested in any of this, uh, get in touch with me at Twitter or whatever, at Cyrusel. Yeah. So uh, next slide, please, because we're actually at the end here. So a uh, quick future plans for uh, DEF CON 201. We uh, currently have submitted, uh, again, outside of our comfort zone to New York Comic Con in Exotica, which is this uh, porno convention that happens in Edison, New Jersey. We're going to be talking, trying to talk about like sex workers' rights and SESTA FOSTA. So cross your fingers, we get accepted. We hope to see you all at many conventions next year, including DEF CON 29, HOPE 2020, uh, RubyCon, The Returns, uh, the, uh, what, do you, what do you call that, DerbyCon, Resurrects, uh, Cats and Dogs Living Together, Mass Hysteria. Uh, we're also trying to organize with the city, which got delayed due to COVID, uh, Privacy and Security Week. That's citywide. So in the way they have like a giant art festival citywide, we want to do like a citywide thing for privacy and security. Uh, again, we're reaching outside of our comfort zones. You can see us at many conventions and places that you normally would not see hackers, including us, which we encourage everyone to do. And a very long term, we're linking up with some really awesome people throughout the state uh, to try to make a B -side, what we call B-Sides Turnpike, or first ever like truly real, non-corporate, all-hacker-made hacker con. Uh, we also want to shout out there that we hate being the only New Jersey group right now so if you want to make something oh, even yeah. if we're 8 million miles away reach out to us we will help you especially yes. with promotion. Also um, if anyone's interested in a DEF CON group in Suffolk County, Long Island I might be able to help you set up for DEF CON 631 yeah. so get in touch with me and I have a, I have a couple of venues in mind and a meeting structure yeah. for that. So uh, next slide please. Uh, this is the slide where normally we take questions, but I'll quickly tell you uh, where to contact us. You can find us on the DEF CON Discord, on the uh, DEF CON group Discord. Uh, we are on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, you can go to our website, DEF CON 201, and you can go to our email at info at DEF CON 201.org. Uh, Next slide, please. Final slide. <laughs> so... Thank you all for going through this talk with us here. Uh, again, our website's defcon21.org. You can find us on Twitter at defcon201nj. Here comes the giant hook to yank us away. Uh, yeah. We're on Instagram and a bunch of stuff on defcon201. You can find us at Mastodon, defcon21, uh, who sucks at social, and shout out to BSI Lab, Gonzo, Black Cypher, Inoculant, Squirtle, Hev Hacker, Night Owl, Johnny Xmas, Logic S, Saint My Ninjas, and Nexus 6, and many, many others, including Jason Street and every other defcon group who put this together. And yeah. Zoe, Zoe Braderman, too. Yes, Hacker Planet, Jersey. Uh, Dirty Jersey represent I'm getting a drink F you also, all your mother also I'm the one Drop with the, the pay phone there uh, just Drop the mic let's get out of here <laughs> yeah <laughs> out of here alright alright we will be murdering trivia uh, thank you for everyone for having us and I see uh. alright uh, sorry we're running uh a little late with the next uh, presentation. We'll just uh, take All right. A um, All right. I wonder if you guys can hear me. Um, just clap if you can. All right. I'm seeing some hearts coming through. Okay. Cool. Awesome.